hello everyone how you guys doing um today happy new month by the way and welcome back welcome back to adi babes vlog and um if you have not clicked the share button you have not commented before make sure you do so and subscribe to this channel um i'm going to be showing you a video i came across on youtube is this young man that saw uh, sorry that I saw that spoke about being I smoking the trees and how we saw a lot of spiritual things going on um, also while he was watching Jay-Z's video he saw a couple of things he mentioned in the video and I would love you guys to watch it till the end um, be inspired I'm sure you will after watching this and watch it till the end make sure you watch it till the end don't forget again to click the subscribe button yeah, don't forget again to click the subscribe button. Don't forget to click the like, click the share, and the bell. That bell. Click the bell. Anyways, take care. Bye. What's up, YouTube? Um, my name is Miles McClendon, and I just want to share my testimony about how I came to Christ through seeing the devil and the hip hop music. And I saw a lot of different things, but primarily that is what led me to giving my life over to Christ. I want to I want to say thank you to everybody who has shared their testimony of some type of supernatural experience because it's encouraged me to do the same and to be obedient to God and to and to share to share our stories of what happened of what really happens in the spirit because it's more real than the natural realm. And so I was 18 years old because I want to get right into it. I'm 34 now. I was 18, it was 2006. I was at Wayne State University and I was with a lot of bad influences. I didn't smoke weed, I didn't do any of those things, but once I turned 18, I started. And I started a lot. And things started happening to me as I would smoke weed. Um, so the first time well, we were all, it was me and a, a lot of friends, we were all in my um, dorm room after we had smoked and I had a computer in my in my um, in my room and we would play music and it would just you know be loud it's on the weekend everybody could play the music and when it was playing while I was high I started to dance uncontrollably and I did not have say on what I would do it was like control of my body it was I was possessed and I was telling my friends because I was about to start crying. I'm like, yo, I don't have control of my body. I'm like, hey, cut the music off. And you know, they laughing. And finally they cut the music off and I got control of my body again. And so I thought, you know, I brushed it off like that was a, a crazy experience, but we smoked again and we in my room again. And this time my friend starts to, he starts to, to dance and he can't stop dancing and he's saying miles i know what you're talking about um i can't stop dancing he's like cut the music off and so i went and i cut the music off now mind you when we would dance the people that were around us would become entranced they would be they would be so spellbound by what we by what we did because it wasn't us there was there was there was the presence of demons literal demons that were that were seducing spirits that would entrance people to where they could watch us dance for hours and i want to i want to emphasize that because it would take some time for me to finally get to say that i'm not in control it would take some time because when you're high you don't have a real good measure on the time everything seems like longer it's like slow motion it's like you go into the into the eternal realm 
and, and, and it's, you know, time is, is relative. It can seem longer, shorter, but for some reason, every time I smoke, it would seem like slow motion. Everything was slow motion. And so this last time we smoked, we decided to go over my, my friend's apartment and they had like a bachelor pad and I call this the straw that, that broke the camel's back because they had two or three blunts and I, I would smoke a couple, uh, I would take a couple hits and I would be, I would be done. But this particular time they had this big couch and a big screen TV, surround sound, it was a, a true bachelor pad. And they had two or three um, blunts and they, they rolled them around and I, I was I was done, I was stuck. And um, all of a sudden, my eyes went out of focus. They they blurried and I, I couldn't see. And then they focused, when they, when they refocused, I had 20-20 vision and I wear glasses and I had 20-20 vision and I could zoom in and zoom out. It was crazy. And I looked down at the carpet and the carpet, the carpet started swirling. It started swirling and then it changed into this beautiful portrait. I'm talking about, it's something I haven't seen to this day. It looked like it was like an ancient art or something like that. And a voice came to my ear and said, you can draw this and you can be rich and famous. You can trace this. All you have to do is get high every day. And I was like, I'm tripping. Whatever, whatever this voice is, it made me deeply afraid because I haven't drawn or told anybody that I could draw. And I have a love for drawing in such a long time that it made me understand that something has been studying me for a long time and has been waiting for the perfect opportunity to present this because it was a real temptation. It was a real temptation. That's the thing about that word is that it's not going to be something that you don't desire. And so I realized that I was like, whatever this is, I don't want no parts because what's the, what's the price? And so I'm still at the mercy of the marijuana because I can't move. My body is incapacitated. So I'm, I'm like stuck and they put on this DVD and they were going to put Tupac Machiavelli. And I'm so glad they did. They didn't uh, because I don't, I, I've never watched it, but I don't know if I would have been able to handle it looking back, but they put on Jay-Z fade to black. And I had never seen that either. And so my eyes had blurried again, like right, right before they did that. And I told you I had 2020, they had blurred after the 2020. And when they focused again, it was like, I went past the natural and I was able to see spiritual things. Like straight up, I could just, I could see spirits. It was, it was crazy. And when they put the fade to black on, I had knowledge about things that nobody ever taught me. And so he started off and the, and the camera was like, at, it was facing uh, the sky and it was talking about, you know, I got to do this show, you know, a night when the stars is aligned. And before I do that, I got to get everybody up to my level and literally like audible voices. And I was saying it out loud. I was like, that's witchcraft. I was like, wait, how do I know that? And I was like, whatever, I'm tripping, I'm high. And this is my conversation to myself. I looked around to see if people, you know, were looking at me like I'm crazy because I'm talking to myself. And so I'm conscious enough to know that what I'm seeing is not normal, but I'm still high. And so the DVD of Jay-Z Fade to Black consists of him showing his performance at Madison Square Garden about his retirement with the Black album. It's his retirement album. And it was showing the process of him making the, the, the album fade to black. And so 
When the camera showed Jay-Z, he had a snake inside of him. I'm talking about, it was like about this, it was like this big and the snake was colorful and it wasn't, it wasn't saying anything or doing anything, but it was just, he was walking around and I could see the snake inside of him and the, and the tail, the tail was moving a little bit. It was like swaying like this. And he was, you could see him like, you know, seeing fast forward, you could see him going like this through songs. He's trying to find the right song. He's um, narrating on the, on, the, on the DVD saying, you know, you got to find the right song. He said, if you get the right artist with the right song and you crack the door open, he said, God will come in. He was lying because it wasn't the God of the Bible. It was the God of this world, which is Satan. And he was, he found the song and the snake that I was watching the whole time, because I was looking to see if anybody else saw it, but it was just me. The snake started speaking like at a real fast rate. It started going like this, like real fast, real fast. And he looked like he was possessed like I was when I was dancing and he started mumbling and he went in the studio and he did the song after that happened. And he said, I don't know what y'all call it, man. I call it my magic moment. And I was about to cry and go crazy because what was happening to me at that time was I was realizing that Satan is real. And I was realizing that I'm on the wrong side. I'm on the wrong side. I I felt this dread, this fear, this weight of, of my condition. If I was to die right now, where I would go? And it was not heaven. And it was not, it was a horrible feeling but I'm still at the mercy of this marijuana. And at the time I, I, I catch the ride with my friends. So when they are ready to go, I gotta go, you know, I'm not gonna be able to go until they are ready. And so I'm still there and I'm watching him in, engage with all the people throughout the whole Fade to Black uh, documentary. And he goes and he's doing this performance and he's doing this performance with masses of people and he's telling them to throw their hands up. And he, he had Mary J. Blige come out there and the way Mary J. Blige sang to Jay-Z was like she was worshiping a God. It was like she was worshiping God. It was, it sounded like like when you're in the choir and you have a solo and you sing to God, but it was to a man and it, it was, it was to this, it was to Jay-Z. And I was understanding because we idolized Jay-Z growing up in my time. We, we idolized him and, and you don't realize what that word means. You literally put him on a pedestal that you worship him. And then he said, throw in your hand, throw your hands up. And everybody would just throw their hands up. And so I'm trying to get out of this room. That's that's my goal at the time. I'm watching the DVD, but I want to get away from it as far as possible. But I can't. And so I get as close to the door, the exit. I get as close as I can. And he said, everybody get your hands up. And I felt this force come under my hands and try to lift my hands up. And something inside of me snapped and I went like, no, it's only one God. And I was like, wait, why did I just say that? And when I looked to my left, all of my friends had their hands up. They looked like zombies. It was the most frightening thing you ever want to see. Everybody's face was pale. It was a whole bunch of weed smoke. But in the midst of that weed smoke, I saw other spirits there. I saw that we weren't alone. I saw that, man, they were leading us to hell. And I'm trying not to get choked up now because it was so, so real. I cannot explain to you that the spirit realm is more real than the natural realm. 
And I saw that. And I was like, okay, I, I got to go home. I got to get home. And that was the only thing that was keeping me from like breaking. It was like, I had to use all my strength. It was the grace of God. I had to use all my strength not to just snap and just break down and just lose it because I was about to lose my mind. And so we finally get ready to go. The album is finally done. I even saw Kanye West. I saw Kanye West on the album, how he looked how, on the DVD how he looked up to Jay-Z, how he came out with this song called Lucifer Son of the Morning. That was, it was on the documentary. I'm trying to leave and I just keep seeing things that are confirming how real Satan is. And it was, and, and Jay-Z went and he was rapping and he quoted a scripture from the Bible and he came outside and scratched his head. And he said, word to my mother, I never read the Bible in my life. And I understood that Satan knows the word of God. He tempted Jesus with the word of God. I understood that he used to be an angel in heaven and that he fell. I understood that he could possess somebody and that they could potentially speak something that they didn't learn themselves because they're being possessed by a spirit that knows everything that's going through their mouth. And he said, I wet y'all all with the holy water. And when I perish, the meek shall inherit the earth until that time is on and popping church. I understood that he meant that he, the devil knows he's going to perish. But until that time, I'm going to get as many people to go to hell as possible. It's on and popping church. Everything he was saying, I understood the spiritual consequences and the ramifications behind it. I knew that this was not a game. That these songs, these rap artists, these people that do these songs under the influence of the devil are waging war against the saints of God, against humanity. He already has humanity entrenched um, in sin and, and bondage by the spirit of disobedience and they're already by nature children of wrath so he already has them he's waging war against the people that are already believers and the people that potentially could become believers so he wants to keep you bound so he wages war through music through temptations through things that will keep you doing what will get you to hell and so I also understood, because I felt it, the intense hatred that they have for humanity. The way the devil feels about you is beyond comprehension. He hates you so much that he, want you, he wants you to go to hell. He wants you to burn in eternity in hell. You have done nothing to him but he hates you. He is our enemy, our arch enemy, the first person that was created by God. He deceived. He had them fall. The first two, he had them fall. He couldn't get to Adam directly, so he went through his wife and they got to Adam and they both fell. God saved us with great difficulty. It was the reason why Jesus says there's only one way to get to heaven is because there was only one way to redeem us. It was with great difficulty that he saved humanity. What the devil really did to us, what the devil really waged war against us is beyond what you what we can understand. And I was getting this download like of understanding the war that he is waging against us straight from the pits of hell. And he's got agents. He's got rappers, he's got singers, he's got, he's got scientists, he's got all these people, but greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. I'm just letting people know that if you, if you watch this and you think that, you know, you try to water it down or downplay it, I'm, I'm trying to tell you that it's, 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 it's realer than what you, than what you know. It's realer than what you can understand. 
unless you get this revelation from God and God can give you this revelation if you ask him. And so, all right, um, I had to, I had to change the, the scene. I, I had a call that interfered with my, my story. So resuming where I left off, I finally was getting ready to, to leave with my friends and they stayed in a, almost like a similar setup to a dorm, except they had apartments. So there was a hallway, there was some steps, and in the hallway there was different doors that led to different apartments. But I remember distinctly leaving out after everybody. I think I went to the bathroom to put some water on my face and honestly to try to sober up. And we walked out and I heard them talking amongst themselves in front of me like, man, she at it again. There she go again. And I was wondering what they were talking about. And the thing was, when they opened the door, there was so much weed smoke that came out of the door that you knew that whoever was neighbors to them were, were catching a lot of weed smoke secondhand. Smelling it, the vapors, the smoke, there was definitely a residual effect that was just out in the hallway when we just opened the door. But we were walking and we're all still high and I'm like the last person and I'm walking and I see this light on this door and it is like, like a light was shining down from heaven on this door. And when I got to the door of this particular apartment, there was this girl behind the door and she was singing her heart out to God. I don't know if it was, well, I know what it was, but it sounded so good. It sounded like it was a recorded album. And I knew it was a real person because they were saying she doing it again. Like I think she's sang before, but I felt God's spirit drawing me to not before I could the same way I felt something come under my hands to try and lift my hands up. And I said, no, I felt God's spirit drawing me to knock on the door. And I was about to knock on the door. I was about to knock on the door. And right when my hand was about to make contact with the wood, one of my friends yelled out like it was Satan trying to reel me back in. And he yelled it with like an anger. He was like, Miles, you coming? And it snapped me out of it. And I started walking back with them. And I looked at the door and I just kept walking. So I was getting ready to go downstairs with all my friends. And we're all dead silent because we're all high. And everybody's in their own world. But we're going down the steps. And the steps is like, it's like two or three flights and the lights weren't working. So it, it started off light and it got dimmer as it went down. And there was one light and it was a red exit sign. So it looked like you were entering into this dark red place just going down. And it looked like you were getting ready to go down the hill. Now, I thought this in my mind. And out of the blue, one of my friends he just yelled out. He was like, we on our way to hell, y'all. And everybody bust out laughing. Everybody just, they thought it was the funniest thing in the world. And I knew I had just thought that. And it just made me want to break down and cry because that's the truth. I, I knew that we were on our way to hell. And it was like I was meeting people because in the college, I'm meeting new people all the time. But it was like we would smoke and it felt like we were on our way to hell and we were meeting people on our way to hell. And so I knew these people, but I didn't know them like that well. And so we get in the car and, we're, and I didn't want to hear no Jay-Z, but that's all we listened to. It was like the very thing that I liked on the other side, seeing if it really what it really was, it was torment to to hear it again. 
but that's all we listened to. So as soon as we got into the car, it was Jay-Z on the CD. And it was so bad that it came on. I was like, I, I don't want to hear no more. But the CD started skipping. And when the CD started skipping, the words that were skipping were making sentences talking to me. I cannot remember everything it was saying, but it was, I was trying to block it out. I'll put it like that, but it was skipping and it was, it was like, it was demonic. It was demonic. It was demonic activity. It was spiritual forces, spiritual wickedness. And you could, you could feel it. It was tangible. And I was, I was done. I had been done hours ago. Finally get to my, what felt like an attorney. We finally get to our dorm rooms and my roommate, his name was Jody. He was, he was, his, it was actually his friends that I was introduced to. And that's the place that we went to. He got into a room. I got into the room and I just got a black trash bag. And I just started dumping my clothes in there and I was getting ready to go. I dumped my clothes in there. And before Jody had walked into the room, I had got on the phone with my mom and I couldn't say anything to her. And it was probably about two or three o'clock in the morning. And I called because I wanted to go home. And it rang like three times. And the conversation went just like this. And this is my mom picking up. She grabbed it. She said, hello? Hello? Miles? And all I could say was the most, the only strength I could muster was a broken ma. I just said, ma? She said, you want me to come get you? I'm on my way. And she hung up the phone. And that was the conversation. Her and my dad both came, drove up to, to, the, to the college. They both came in different cars, but they both drove up like they were ready for whatever I was going to tell them. I got in the car with my mom and I told her the story I'm telling you. And I finally, at that moment, I just let it go. I looked at my mom and I said, mom, am I going crazy? And I just broke down. I just... I just broke down. And I and my mom looked at me and she said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And when she said that, it was like I was gasping for air and she gave me air with the word of God. It was like, and I was like, is that what God said? For the first time in my adult life, I wanted to know what God said. And I said, is that what God said? I said, I've been listening to the devil this whole time. Is that what God said? And that little snippet kept my sanity because I was about to lose it. And it, it, it carried over until church that Sunday. I went to church and I still had to hold my composure because I wanted to go to the altar. And I, I can't remember the service. I can't remember what, what they sang, what they preached. All I remember is the altar call. I just remember the altar call. And he invited somebody if they were backslidden or if you want to give your life to Christ, walk up. I walked up and I was holding it together and they took us to the back. And I'm so glad they, they did, but they took us to the back. And I just started crying. I just started crying. I just, I just broke down. And that was my prayer. My prayer was in my heart. I uh, just cried and the and the minister who was there, his name was Elder Charlie. And he just prayed for me. And the prayer that he said was what my heart was saying. And he was putting words to what my heart was saying. And as I was crying, I felt this weight that was on my back, like it had wings. It just lifted off my back. It just lifted off my back and I physically felt forgiven. I felt forgiven. And then I had like a download 
of just the reality that Jesus Christ is the truth, the way, and the life. And that's the only way to get to heaven. This is real. The Bible is real. The church of God is real. I, I understood it all. It was like he just, he just, he gave me just the download. And then I knew that I was that that he had a calling for me to go into into ministry, and I just had a hunger for God, and I just wanted to share my testimony of how that happened for me because it's real, it's real, and if this touches just one life, if it was just one life, it was worth it for me to get online and share this with you. And I want to say thank you again to everybody who has shared their stories of what has happened that has led them to Christ. Because God, God said in his word that we are overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Oh, God is good. He's good, and I want I want you all to be encouraged. I want you all to be encouraged and know that God, he, he went through great difficulty for you to have the opportunity to be saved. There was only one way for him to do it. And if you feel this message resonate in your heart. I would like to give you the opportunity that I, I didn't know that wasn't given to me. God can save you in the way that's unique for you. I had no sinner's prayer. It was my heart. And that's what he wants. He wants your heart. He wants your heart to repent and to turn to him to turn away from the enemy and turn to the one who loves your soul. The one who loves you so much that he died a brutal, horrible death on the cross. His blood was shed so that we can obtain heaven. He became our sin, our mistakes, our faults, so that we could become his righteousness, his holiness, and have right standing with God. God is so good. He's so just. He's so holy that he knew I can't deviate from judgment. But if I can give my judgment to myself in turn to redeem them, they can have access to me again and I can have access to them again because I love them so.